Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Dominate and Delegate, which is a self-published title. It's for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and games usually run about 60 to 90 minutes. Dominate and Delegate is a two-player legacy campaign game and a skirmisher for up to four players. It is inspired by video games like Command & Conquer. In this legacy campaign, each player chooses a side and receives their own information needed for the current mission. Both players have secrets which are unknown to the opponent. Thanks to a deep and immersive story, both players advance their teams, fighting battles and try to see the best possible outcome for their faction at the end of the campaign. And there's a lot of possible endings available depending on the decisions of both players. In the skirmish mode, you can play up to four players. You can fight all versus all or even team versus team. Thanks to different scenarios, you have lots of options for maps, conditions, and possible complexity and game length. The game is heavily based on strategy, area control, and keeping secrets hidden. You are moving your units, building factories, and try to conquer the world. Thanks to a secret fog of war, your enemies don't know what you're manufacturing in the weapons factory. Also, the amount of production is secret until the units are ready. Dominate and Delegate offers a wide campaign with dramatic twists and plots. So, there's so many ways to play this game. If you're going to play just a straight up skirmish, they have a board separate for that. It's double sided. Same with the tiles. When you move to a campaign, they're also going to be double sided. So, you have lots of options. And when you dive into these things, especially in the campaign, you might enter buildings, which become very puzzly and a whole different way of playing this type of game. It really adds that next level flavor, like you zoom down into something. And there's fog of war. You'll have question marks that could be around the map, it could be inside the buildings. So, you don't don't know what's coming next. Now what you're seeing set up here is just some random setup. It's not part of the campaign. I got a small taste of the campaign and you know I checked out the skirmish a little bit but you have so many different units you can produce and some of the fog of war is that folks or other players at the table don't know what you're producing. You'll be producing in this production line here but will be only faced you obviously and you'll put your units into play and finally when they're ready you'll pop them out into the world and your opponent won't know what you have created and what is coming next. So like I said I got a small sampling of the campaign. There's several campaign books and a skirmish book that you can dive into and take a look at what you want to do and how you want to progress through the campaign which is really nice. And again this is just small sampling. I'm really looking forward to see how this world flushes out. And in the, even the rule book, the main rule book, you have some nice story elements there defining what the world is and what's going on and maybe even UFOs. But there is also your campaign logbook for keeping track throughout the course of the campaign all the things you need to know. And even though what you're seeing here is just kind of a random setup, the campaign books will lead you through how you're going to set up the world and what units you're going to be able to deploy right away at the start of the game. Of course, through the course of the game, you're going to be developing and building more buildings. More energy is one of the key things you need. Energy is what both sides are after, as well as taking over land or taking over your opponent's buildings. But you're going to have vehicles, you're going to have airships, you're going to have all kinds of troops to put into play. You have engineers that can jump into other players' buildings and take them over. All kinds of really neat aspects around what you're doing here. And if you know games like Command & Conquer, which is one of my favorites growing up, uh, this game definitely has that vibe, that feel. So I'm going to give you the basics, just an overview of what's going on. If you want more information on how to play, there's some great videos for that they have on their campaign page for sure. But you're going to have a, just a couple things you're doing on your turn. You have an activation phase first where you're moving your units, you're gonna do one at a time, and then after you move a unit, you can perform one action. Maybe you're attacking, maybe you're suppressing, and if you're being attacked, you can retaliate, which is nice. Also, you can do things like pick up ore, or unload ore, in order to get the resources you need. And you can also sell buildings if you happen to be low on credits, or maybe just need to get it out of the way for whatever reason. So there's lots of options you can do, but you can only do one action with each of your different types of units. And we'll talk about units in a minute but you also then will move to the production phase where in the fog of war you'll be producing units you can do infantry you can do tanks you can do jeeps you can do all kinds of airships you can do buildings but your opponent won't know what you're constructing getting ready to put out into the battlefield and I really find this production phase to be super thematic because as you put things into play or in the line to be produced you're gonna obviously need credits and you're gonna need energy to make all this work 
but they start to move down the line, getting ready, getting produced to put out into the world. And there'll be restrictions, but you'll get to that ready state and then you'll be able to put them out. And obviously you're gonna need things like a barracks in order to put different ground units or soldiers into play. And to keep track of your credits, as well as your energy, you have this nice handheld unit, your personal device, so to say, that keeps track of that for you as you move through the campaign and the different scenarios. So those are the main resources, obviously, but you're gonna be doing other types of things as well. Now, the units, that's the key thing that you need to go out and deploy, right? So they give you this fantastic guide for that. And this icon on the left is easily referenced to what the miniatures are that you're gonna be putting into play. And you'll see that there's some different types, obviously. You have buildings, you've got infantry, you've got unarmored and armored units, and then finally planes or airships. And then the next category here, the next line, shows what the tech level of these things are. Now, through the course of the campaign, some of the areas of the campaign will allow you to use different levels of tech, but the skirmish will always be the max level of five. So it definitely adds what types of units can be into play for that part of the campaign. Next, we have the cost and credits. So you have to have enough credits in order to put these things on the production line, and then it shows you the time required for these production units. So whatever the number value of the time is, you'll put it on the line, on your production line, in that numbered slot. So you know exactly how long it's gonna take, round after round, as you move through the campaign or the skirmish mode. Then for the building category, you'll see this hammer icon, basically showing what these buildings are gonna do for you. There's also a special column and giving you some additional info around what the buildings do, but there's gonna be some basic things as you expect. If you get a power plant, you're gonna be producing energy. If you get a refinery, you could turn ore into credits. And of course, a barracks is gonna give you infantry and so forth. But there's these different buildings are gonna be key to you producing what you need in order to wage war. Now, for the other units, you have some different things going on here. You first have your movement column showing what the different units are capable of how far they can move across the board. And then you have a range select, like when they go to attack. When they shoot another unit, like if it's infantry, it's usually only one space away. But you can also have different things like airships pick up units and carry them further if you need them to go somewhere quicker. So that's very nice. And then finally, targeting, which is like it sounds. This is what these units can target. So if you look at the rack infantry, it can basically target pretty much anything because it is a rocket launcher after all that you're firing. So this is really, again, nice and handy guide. It might have some special instructions around each of these units as well. The thing about all of this, this guide in general, is the fact that the icons are so incredibly intuitive. You really, just at a glance, know what you need to know about the different units and how they move and what you can produce based on the buildings that you have in play but it'll be up to you to decide the best strategy around which units to produce and which ones to put into play and how you best use those units to attack your opponent. And obviously there's terrain you gotta be mindful of, mountains, forests, there's rivers, you can build bridges, they can be destroyed, and you can use actions to repair bridges. But you can also, again, take over your opponent's buildings, all kinds of options as you move across and attack. Now in the campaign mode, this is one of the things I love about this game, is the fact that there are buildings, and sometimes you can enter into these buildings, which moves us to a whole other type of game. So as you move into buildings, you're gonna have all kinds of different objectives as well. There could be fog of war, you discover rooms as you move through it. There's all kinds of panels and things you can turn on and off, things to be aware of. There could be live animals you have got to deal with, all kinds of things. Maybe you're going into this complex to find the database, copy it, and then destroy it. So some really interesting twists and turns, and as each player tries to move through this complex, the other player will then become like the dungeon master. As you enter into areas and discover things, there's some nice highlighted blue text that leads you through it and so forth. And there might be some private information in here that the other player won't know about. So it's really interesting. It turns into like a dungeon crawl with a puzzly aspect. I really like this aspect. It just adds that next level, that next dimension to the game. A couple other elements I want to mention is the fact that you have mission cards and based on which facts you're playing will show you where you're looking in the campaign books as well as rewards. So when you do well, obviously you'll get rewards and there's tons of different reward cards, but they're going to allow you to carry these over basically and you can put them in your logbook or whatever and use it later, but things like building a building right away. Lots of interesting aspects around these different rewards as you move through the campaign and try to conquer your opponent. So again, this was just a broad look at this game, give you a sense 
movements of the units and what kinds of things you can expect. But obviously there's all kinds of deep strategies to be employed as you go up against your opponents or maybe you're just going to jump into a skirmish and do a team versus team battle which was really fun as well. I just like the fact that it's so easy to engage with the different units off this handy sheet. You know exactly what they're doing, exactly how to use them and what you need in order to get them into play. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, as far as war games go of this style, they've really done a good job streamlining and make it easy to jump in. Of course, there's strategies to be employed, and you'll have to learn some of those as you engage with the enemy and how you best use your troops, but they've made the access to this game really easy to jump into. And I really like this aspect of jumping into a building and then the game changes as you try to solve the puzzle of what's going on inside these buildings. Again, that's in the campaign mode. But if you just want to jump in and have a battle or battle royale, so to say, you can all jump into the skirmish mode and do so. Uh, but it is really an engaging war type game. And again, like I said, I was a big fan of Command and Conquer, the video game, and this really does does give that sense, that vibe of that video game. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.